station, a piercing boutique, a hairdressing salon, or another Starbucks, and hand out <laughs> guest list spots for people and get an audience to come and see you. And if the act of building a band, or a brand, or a cause, or an idea, has to do with the vibration and the connection of people together, which it does, it's the only thing that makes a difference, you're going to do way more of that east of that line. And that goes the whole spectrum from exchanging an email address to bodily fluids. Oops. <laughs> this is more data. You can find all of this data for your unique situation. You know, you were talking about uh, uh, Portuguese bands going up to North America or London. Where, where's the Portuguese speaking population? I don't know where they are in North America. They're probably not in New York, Chicago, Detroit. They, I, I don't fucking know. You might be really surprised. There's a large Mexican population in Chicago. There's a huge Indian population in Detroit. A Korean population in Florida. You can find maps. Find out where people who are likely to support you might be and go there. Make a data-driven decision. This is gasoline prices across North America. The most expensive gas in the country is on the west coast. So you're driving much further distances, much faster, spending more on gas. This is just population distribution across North America. One reason you don't need to play there, <laughs> there's nobody there. There's nobody there. There's nobody there. You just don't need to go to the West <laughs> Coast. <laughs> There's data everywhere. So, for a band from Chicago, traveling, this was their strategy. We're going to play the Whiskey A Go-Go in Los Angeles. And I'm like, you know what? This is great because I teach the business of touring. I wrote a book called Tour Smart, and I used to buy my speed from the cocktail waitresses at the bar next door to the Whiskey A Go Go when I lived in Los Angeles. And I can tell you, it's a shit pay to play venue with a crappy sound system. And they still went. They did this tour instead of that tour. Here's how it breaks out. Imagine if this was in kilometers and Brazilian currency. <laughs> they drove 6,000 miles. They could have just driven 2,000 miles. They spent $1,200 in gas. They could have spent $400 in gas. So, the $800 of tour support that the record label or the government wouldn't give them, they don't need it. They spent 114 hours in the van <coughs> instead of 40 hours. They only did 11 shows, they could have done 14. A show isn't a brick in the wall. A show might be 100 more bricks in your wall of success, right? A t-shirt sold an email address, a conversation, whatever. Ooh. You guys okay? Okay. This is on YouTube, and it's pretty good on YouTube. So I'll, I'll uh, you can find it on YouTube. It's just this. Let's say there's a very important show. And Cincinnati is not a good example. <laughs> Let's say there's a very important show. You don't go there. You go to five, six, seven places within easy traveling distance for your fans up there. 
and you go and you play hard, you rock hard, you give away shit, you accumulate email addresses. And then, when you know you have enough fans, friends, whatever, to have a successful show in Cincinnati, that's when you book the show in Cincinnati. Never take your country to war unless you're sure of the outcome. And you don't just announce the show and hope that your friends and your fans are going to go. You incentivize them to go with a carrot and a baseball bat and a fork in the eye. Whatever. You announce the release of your fake Live in Germany CD. Boom! We're playing in Cincinnati. We're going to have a fake Live in Germany album. And people will say, I'll buy it on the internet. And you'll say, it's not going to be available on the internet yet. It will be available at the Cincinnati <laughs> show. And then you look at the conversations people are having. And if there's a bunch of people who say, I really want to go to the show. I don't have any money for gas. Give them money for gas. That's the best expenditure for an audience member you will ever make. And the cheapest. If the only thing separating you from 10 more people down the front going, yeah, is $20 for gasoline, <coughs> that's a bargain. Usually, it's $20 worth of gasoline. The fact they don't care about you, they're doing something else that night, right? So, the other thing that happens, if you find someone that needs help with transportation, how easy is that to become a fucking hero? What happens after you give that person, you don't give them money, don't give them money for gas, get them gas, give them a gas car or take them to the gas station. But what do they do next? Oh my god! <laughs> the lead singer was just here. He heard we couldn't afford to go to the show. He came and he gave us money for gas. <laughs> Boom! That's word of mouth shit right there. Okay. Technology 101. I can't stress this enough. Technology 101. Always be on the... Always be on... Oh, is that me? Oh, I'm sorry. Always be on the cutting edge of the newest innovations. Yeah, hello? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm doing a... Yeah, I'm doing a lecture. Yeah. That's the best dollar I've ever spent. <laughs> That's an interesting point. I'm taking that to South by Southwest. Right? Because everybody's going to be there with the newest, thinnest, invisible Blackberry. It's there. Look. Hello? What? Oh, it's, I can't wait. It's going to be great. But think about changing the context. That's all that is just changing the context. When everybody in the world is on the internet, send a postcard. Right, people are like, whoa, hold on a minute, there's somebody at the door. Who are you? The postman. What? <laughs> hold on a minute. This guy's giving me a, a picture of a pissing man from Belgium. The fuck? What happens next? <coughs> It gets scanned. Twitter, 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 Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. <laughs> All of my little rules are flexible. Take what you want. Take whatever makes sense. Just have some reasons. But momentum is king. If you have momentum, you can get money. If you have money, you can't always get momentum, and it's difficult and dangerous and very often expensive to even try. And there are lots of people who will help you. Oh, you want some momentum? I'll help you with that. Should we put the money in the toilet, straight on the barbecue, or throw it out the window? After I take my 
cannot. <laughs> Nothing beats momentum. You pour gasoline wherever there is a spark. You don't arbitrarily decide where you're going to go, like London. <laughs> I'm going to meet David Beckham. <laughs> you find out where the sparks are and you pour gasoline on the sparks. Then you have a fire. Anybody know anything about black metal? No. No way. Oh, you guys suck. Oh, no you don't, sorry. Um, well, I went to Bergen, Norway. They asked me to go. The, the book had only been out for, I don't know, two months. Somebody sent me an email, we want you to come to the Hole in the Sky Festival and talk. I thought, what? Hole in the Sky. That feels nice. Hole in the Sky. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't until I got to the airport that I googled Hole in the Sky Festival, Bogen, Norway. It is the world center of black Nordic metal. <laughs> okay. What's black metal? When these guys aren't killing each other, <laughs> they're burning churches. <laughs> I was already in the airport. I went there anyway. <laughs> so the first time I, ever, I had like three screens and a piece of paper. And I threatened them. I told them that black metal was to Norway what ABBA was to Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Um, there's a reason I stopped drinking. <laughs> But, so I had a good time. They liked me. Uh, another organization asked me to go back. So I did, uh, I forgot the name of their festival in February. Bilal, in Oslo. When I was at Bilal, I met a guy from Scotland and we started a night together called Born to be Wide in a pub in Scotland. And I went back to Norway a third time to do a five city tour. While I was there doing a five city tour, I was in the city of Christiansund, which is in the process of changing from a fishing based economy to a cultural, experiential, education based economy. The bear of Christiansand is a PIL fan. I'm now constructing <laughs> the city of Christiansund. Luck? Chance? I don't fucking think so. I poured gasoline on that fucking spark, right? Data-driven decisions number two. Uh, does everybody have a YouTube account? Do you know about Insight? You know about Insight? No. Did you see that button called Insight that I pressed? When you press it, it has to be your account. Then you get this, a map of the world, it's like Mission Impossible, a map of the world <laughs> where people are viewing your videos the most. And look at this, 15 people on April, May the 15th, it's insane. So, you can go to the places where people like you. I think someone was talking about Google Alerts before. Wait, right, say Google Alerts and, and look at this stuff. There's a band called Fest One, Los Angeles, they're a, a hip hop band. They put a free remix tape download on their website. They put a Google Analytics widget on their webpage so they can track the downloads. And you can do that through bandcamp.com, I think. Although I think you have to set, no, uh, bandcamp.com, you can sell things for zero. Uh, there's a widget for Facebook where you have to charge 49 cents for something that's kind of fucked. Um, but they found 1,200 kids in Beijing, China downloaded their mixtape. So they called a promoter in Beijing, China, and guess what? They had a pretty good fucking show. A bunch of kids showed up. Never take your country to war 
unless you're sure of the outcome. There's something called hotspots. Do you know about hotspots? Nope. Okay. Once you, <laughs> once you press your insight button, you get that screen. Uh, I interviewed a band from Norway at South by Southwest. So I want to see if anybody from Norway watched the video. So I click on Norway. How many people from Norway watch that video? Not many. Not very many at all. Good information. But, hotspots has to be your account. You have to have three or four hundred views to have enough data. The screen splits into two. This is your video. This is a timeline graph, which is slightly cut off. I apologize. It's an aggregate of audience attention. So, as soon as a bunch of people have watched your video, you can look at the data and go, wow, every time we cut to a picture of the drummer, people go, fuck this. <laughs> so, you don't have to, but you can just leave the drummer out. Or have the drummer have his own video. Have your 5,000 fans watch the video without the drummer, and the drummer's four fans can watch his own little video. Okay. Um, so this is the timeline attention. I'm walking around South by Southwest with uh, one of my friends, uh, Mary, she's a suicide girl. So what happened in the video to have people go, yeah, 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 paying attention? Her legs. <laughs> I mean, I could go back and just make it all legs. And me going, buy my book now. More legs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to take the high ground and say, I'm not going to do that. I just haven't had time. Otherwise, I would have done it. You know, I would have done it. Okay, I have just a few more things to get to. This is something that I think can help protect you. If you know that you're fucked, then you're not. And I don't mean like, oh yeah, 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 there's this crazy fucking British guy, blah, 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 blah fucked. You have to know that you're fucked in your head and your heart. Not slightly crispy around the edges, totally fucked. If you know and understand that, you're not. If you think that you're not, you fucking are. It's nice, isn't it? It almost has, apart from the fucks, a Walt Disney kind of a Christmassy feel. <laughs> if you know that you're fucked, then you're not. If you know. <laughs> but it's heavy. It's kind of spiritual, but it's heavy. Right? And I know, I know what a couple of you are thinking. It's heavy. I know. What is that in German? Wenn du weißt, dass du gefickt bist, bist du nicht gefickt. Wenn du glaubst, dass du ich nicht bist, bist du gefickt. That's the shirt, isn't it? <laughs> bist du gefickt? Question mark. Fuck. Don't have that either. Oh, hey, and I should tell you, you know I say free is the new black. Um, I have some ebooks here that if someone doesn't have any money, fucking take one. You can download my whole 600 pages of my book. If you have money and you don't give me any, then you will burn in the fires of hell. <laughs> but if you don't have money, fucking, I forgot to mention that. Okay, just a few more things I want to get to. Is everybody still okay? Are we all right for time? Are we okay? Don't be an asshole! 
bans everywhere. I was in China. This band would just be assholes. I'm like, oh no! I thought China was going to be different. <laughs> Have you had this experience? <laughs> All the time. If you want to be an asshole, go be an asshole in your bedroom. Hit yourself yeah. in the face with a, with a microphone, and whatever. Headbutt yourself <laughs> in the mirror. And just don't come out until you're prepared to be nice to people. I'm speaking from experience. I've been a ridiculously silly, nasty, drunken, technicolor, mirrorball, disco asshole. <laughs> That's not good. I mean, and it will always be, because of Murphy's Law, you will always be an asshole to the person who could be the most help to you six or seven years down the line. I think one particularly memorable explosion, I was in the dressing room punching my way through the wall because there wasn't quite enough beer for 20 people for me. And I upset this one guy. And I didn't know his name at the time, but I could have fast forwarded into the future and gone, is your name going to be uh, Kevin Wyman, who's going to go on to create something called The Wall Tour? Oh, shit. <laughs> and we weren't friends for a while. Now we're friends again, because that was a long time ago. But it's always going to be something like, just don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> you always need to do more than any sane person would ever do. That's the rule. It's nine days a week, 28 hours a day, 57 weeks. Yeah, that's, that's the way it is if you want to succeed in this business. If you find yourself in bed, and if you find yourself in your bed at nine o'clock at night, thinking, well, that was a good day, something is about to go horribly, horribly wrong. There are no economies of scale or effort of money. People either pay attention or they don't. That's it. So, if you spend $50 and one week on one press kit for one person that gets a review or a mention in a famous South American newspaper, Was that too much money to spend? No, because now you've got a review or a mention you can put in your press kit and you can go to some other fuckhead journalist and go, well, the guy in the Times really likes it. Conversely, if you get 50 press kits made for a dollar and nobody pays any attention, was that a bargain? Was that a great deal? No. It just made a horrible first impression to 50 people. It's very difficult to take that first impression back. That's why I was talking about Gua earlier on. Gua is celebrating their 25th anniversary. Maybe 26 years ago, there was just two of them in a rehearsal room in Richmond, Virginia with a drum machine saying, hey, this could be pretty good. Me and you, we are Gua, G-W-A-R, Gua. We are Gua, Gua. Just the two of them. This is great. Not a problem for the sound guy. <laughs> if we don't get much food, if we only get one sandwich, that's half a sandwich each. If we only get twenty dollars, that's ten dollars each. We can always sleep on somebody's floor, just the two of us. We can tour in a little car and we'd save lots of money on gasoline. Yeah, this is perfect. Or we could get ten other people in the band and a bunch of huge costumes. <laughs> Then we can only tour in an old school bus, but we 
can only afford a poorly maintained school bus that gets really bad miles to the gallon will always be hungry. There'll never be any money. Yeah, let's do that. That's why Guar are celebrating their 25th anniversary. None of this shit makes any sense. You have to go with what's important to you. Yeah, making cool shit. <laughs> That's what it's about now. Led Zeppelin 3. Anybody remember that? Was this 1970-something? A disc that revolves around inside another disc with holes. What fucking sense does that make? Can you imagine being at the record label office? Oh, fuck. The guys from Led Zeppelin are coming in and there's a thing where the wheels are turning. It's going to cost a fortune. Was there anybody at that meeting who said, yeah, where's the column for how many albums we're going to sell in 33 years' time? <laughs> that guy would have been thought to be completely insane. Boom. It's not the packaging alone that makes it, it's the combination of the band, the music, and the packaging. It's very powerful. Here's the first album I played on, Metalbox Public Image Limited. It's three 12-inch vinyl singles in a metal film canister with the PIL logo embossed in the lid. It got some good reviews and some bad reviews. Then, there was some national publicity because some punk rock kids got into a fight. They made a hash brownie in the lid. Yeah, what's the translation for that? <laughs> a pot cookie. You, you know the translation? I'm very worried about you. <laughs> they, they got into a fight over who got the piece in the middle with the PAL logo on it. The fight went into the street, the police came, an ambulance came, and it was headlines in the in national media. I'm not going to guarantee you that if you do something crazy and interesting with the packaging of your music, that you will get amazing secondary national press. But I will guarantee you, if you don't, you won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> that album came out in 1979. At the end of 2008, it was voted by the Wall Street Journal as one of the top five packaged albums of all time. Didn't make me any more money. It made very much money from doing it anyway. But it just gave me a bit of a bounce in my step that day. I was able to show a couple of people. Fuck. <laughs> Last year at South by Southwest, I saw this band on the street. Wow, they have this CD in a brown paper bag. Where did you get this printed? Where did you get this printed? And they laughed and they opened another one. It's completely different. <laughs> then they opened the back door of the van. Here's the bass player. <laughs> And typing every single one. <laughs> 20 minutes per hour. It makes no sense at all. You can write, you can have somebody write a check to have your CDs delivered in two weeks' time. Never touched by human hands. Shrimp wrapped in plastic. UPC code. That doesn't matter anymore. This is the stuff that matters. This is product needs to vibrate with everything about you and your band and your music and that's how you connect with people you can see the indentations that the keys made in the paper it's crazy uh, our dogs are hungry Stephen is teaching me to play the vol I still remember what it said and I took those bags all over the world I took them to Germany, where the students translated, if you think that you're fucked, then you're not. And you dip and dip. <laughs> How valuable is that? You're taking these bags all over the world. It's the only thing that makes sense. Here's Shogun Kunitonki. This is their handheld 
DIY building yourself battery powered strong boy kit. That you build so that you can have the full experience of listening and watching their vinyl album. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> uh, you be here too. It's kind of like a new version of Led Zeppelin 3, isn't it? It's cool sound. Now, I don't think they intended this, but after you order the thing, it's 68 US dollars from Denmark. And after you build the battery powered stroller and you burn your fingers with the soldier knife and the cat takes the resistor and you <laughs> fuck you cat and the cat takes a shit and you get I've got the resistor <laughs> Sorry You're so invested in this music you're in no position to make an objective decision about whether you like it or not. You're going to fucking love it. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was, I, I was saying that things are changing very quickly. I want to show you something else that's stunning. This is an artist called Moldova, M-O-L-D-O-V-E-R. Yeah, if it was an A, Moldova, he should be from here. But he's Moldova and he's from San Francisco. <laughs> the titles of his songs are written in circuitry. Okay, cool, very arty. But wait. The, the, the battery's kind of dead. But, I know what you're saying. Not another artist with a light sensitive theremin built in to the jewel case of their, yes. <laughs> with a headphone output, Jack. It's a fucking light sensitive theremin. $50. He sold 500 in the first month. Want to do the math? It's $25,000. Uh, you can pass this around if you want. You just have to make sure I get it back. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll kill you. But, a few questions with that. Okay, what's the cost of the parts? Is he making money? I don't fucking care. Because I've spent the last month but all over America, four events a day. I'm here now. I'm going to Europe in a week's time. And I'm like, yeah, I wrote a book. I was in a band with Johnny Rotten. Moldova, Moldova, Moldova. I'm not his agent, I'm not his publicist, I'm not his record label, I'm not his manager. He's a fucking genius. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, that's a gimmick. Now, if Madonna had hired him to do that, and the light flashed when you pressed Madonna's nipple, <laughs> that's a gimmick. <laughs> if you watch any of the YouTube videos with this guy, this is who he is. There's videos of him on a bus, rocking out on the bus. He's fucking amazing. I love him. <laughs> but even if it does cost $50 for every copy of this, look at the, this uh, viral explosion of goodwill and publicity he's getting. Now, I'm sure it doesn't cost him $50 to make them. But... When I called him on the phone, I'm like, hey, Moldova, how's it going? He's like, ah! <laughs> He's freaking out. I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? How's it selling? He's like, I've sold 500 copies. Like, well, that's good. I'm trying to talk him down. Well, that's good. Isn't but now he had to make them. He thought he was going to have to make 30 or 40. <laughs> but here's the great thing. This is his great wall of fucking China, isn't it? 
he gets to call up all of his friends in San Francisco. What are you doing this weekend? Well, we're thinking of bike riding. No, you have to go buy a soldering iron and get your ass down here. I've sold a bunch of albums. And then all of those people get to say, sorry, I can't come to your heroin party in San Francisco. I've got to go and help fucking crazy Moldova with this fucking thing. It's... However bad the problem is, it heals and solves itself in a really cool and arty way. Okay. I have one more thing for you, kind of. I've, I've got a ton, I can do another two hours, I've got a ton of shit. But I'm just going to give you a couple more things here. So, when I was in China, uh, I bought a bunch of posters from the Cultural Revolution. Um, and I remixed, I borrowed an idea from a punk band called The Undertones. Uh, they had a single called Teenage Kicks in 1980 and they couldn't afford a cover. So they made a poster and they folded the poster. Oh, 10 cents. <laughs> And that's what I did with posters from the Cultural Revolution. And there's 42 different posters. And some of them, I have to fold them differently because the artwork doesn't work as well, so I change the folds. And we sell these in sets of four, framed. Just art. Red vinyl, of course did something else I want to show you. Does anybody know how to screen print? Does anybody? We do? Okay, good. Um, you need to control the printing press. Does anybody have a blade? No. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Anybody want to open a seven inch? Got to open it. So, oh, this is this one open. Ah. Um, and you can pass these around if you want. <coughs> this side. Scratch and sniff blueberry. Hold up. They'll sniff it. You might be allergic to synthetic blueberry. Mm. Wow. What's it sound like? It's fucking blueberry. <laughs> But something, I, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. Something happened to me. I'm down in my basement. I have a big building in Chicago. I'm down in my basement fucking around with this stuff. Scratch it, sniff blueberry. Hey. Look, hold on a minute, Martin. You just turned 50. You've got four kids. Why don't you fucking grow up and be responsible? And then I heard Starbucks have spent millions of dollars investigating the smell. They can impregnate copies of USA Today newspaper underneath the sticker so people can lift the sticker and scratch. Blueberry is the smell that will make people spend more money at Starbucks. Out of all the smells they test marketed, blueberry was the smell. It's the, it's the other side. It's the other side. The other side. Other side. Other side. So then I didn't feel quite so silly and misdirected. Then I hear there's a politician in Korea 
Whenever he makes an appearance, they release one particular smell that people start to associate with him and his ideas. Stuff opens the gateways more so than the eyes and the ears. And then I read that Omni International Hotels have just copyrighted a smell for their hotel lobby. It's a little bit ginger, a little bit lemongrass, a little bit home. <laughs> So now I feel silly for questioning myself and what I have started to do is pour gasoline on my own sparks, not question the ideas and the feelings that I have because they're a result of 30 or 40 years of doing this and 15 or 16 years sober. So I'm learning to trust myself. People say, you have to have a passion. You must be passionate about something to succeed. I don't know. I don't know about that. I think that you have to be curious. You have to want to find out and experiment and fuck around. That will pull you through all of this stuff. Okay. So now, where the fuck are we? Freeze the new black, never take your country to war, 3D decisions. What am I selling? Well, I've got a book. But if you don't have any money, you can take the e-book. Am I selling these seven inches? No. No, I'm not selling them. Fabricio, you can have some if you want. <laughs> Selling the stuff around the thing. Selling blueberry muffins. Right? There's a table. No, I'm not selling blueberry muffins. <laughs> Happy birthday. I'm giving. <laughs> Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, these need to be translated. Very <laughs> oh. <laughs> So now what am I selling? Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, don't eat them! No. <laughs> I got them in China. I think they're... I think they're... Ah. Actually, I, brought, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have brought those in from the States, should I? That's illegal. Yeah. Oh. But how nice to have American blueberry muffins on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'm not selling the muffins. Well, now what? Maybe later today, after one of the gigs, those of you who didn't get the muffins will be like, fuck. <laughs> get me some muffins! <laughs> Maybe you'll break into a bakery. And you'll be in the back, yeah. You'll be in the back having like a blue Muffin rain. When you hear the police sirens, I'll be outside with the little wipes to remove all the traces of the blueberry. Fifteen dollars each. Yes. <laughs> Maybe next time I come, I'll fuck around with the recipe. You'll be like, here he comes, blueberry, he's gonna do the blueberry. I'll make them really dry. So you're sitting there like, oh fuck. Then I'll sell you a glass of milk for $20 a glass and you have to pay for it. But honestly, 
I don't fucking know. I'm just at this point with the shit that I'm doing. Giving a ton of stuff away <laughs> and enjoying it and wondering where it's going to go. I had a nightmare, actually, that I don't always, you know, I used to love playing my drums. I used to play drums a lot. I had this nightmare that I'd be remembered as Martin Atkins died today. Oh, the blueberry muffin guy. <laughs> no, the drummer. The fucking drummer. The blueberry guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know that it makes sense. And I don't fucking care. <laughs> That's my shit. Thank you.